So these are some of the houses closest to uh, where the gas leak is located. Uh, these houses uh, were being built at around the same time that uh, uh, the site was being converted from uh, oil uh, to natural gas storage. Uh, the movie E.T. was filmed here and you may remember the kids were bicycling through areas where houses were being built. These are those houses. <laughs> wow. So this is really part of uh, uh, the culture of America right here, essentially the key yeah. you think of is Americana. You know, yes, is yes it is. But, but the oldest houses that are over in this area, uh, which are just ahead of us here, they were built in the 1960s before this was converted from uh, oil to gas. And so the gas company has tried to claim they were here first, they were here before these houses were built. But these houses that you see right up in front of us here, these were built in the 60s before the gas company came here. They were still uh, a, an oil field that looked like it was about to be closing and people moving in here thought that they had good reason uh, okay, and there's the, the there's the front gate, isn't it, of the... Yes, this is the front gate to the Aliso oil field, um, our gas storage field. Back on the road. <laughs> we can turn in to this uh, cul-de-sac here for a moment. And uh, um, I forgot what I was saying. Well, this is the front gate. Oh yeah, th this, um, is, this gate is also used by Termo Company, uh, they pass through the Aliso gas storage field to get to their oil field that continues to operate um, on an adjacent property and at a dip different depth, so it's a different rock formation where they're still pumping oil. And they have been doing fracking at that oil field, and the gas company recently admitted that it has experimented with fracking in the gas field here uh, to try to increase the amount of storage capacity that they have. And this is really the worst imaginable place to be doing fracking. Uh, this site is the junction of the fault that caused the Northridge earthquake and the fault that caused the Silmar earthquake, which were both magnitude 6.7 earthquakes and caused massive damage around this area. And we just had a study out last week that concluded that uh, fracking in California has caused uh, earthquakes and uh, we, we should not be fracking here. Okay, so, um, all right, let's go over this again. This is the area where the plates uh, meet, and this is where we had the, that was a very major earthquake in Northridge. What was, do you remember what the magnitude We, we had a magnitude 6.7 North, Northridge earthquake, and a couple decades before that, we had the magnitude 6.7 Silmar earthquake. And the two faults both slant up and are very shallow right here under this oil field. Oh uh, so they are really drilling down into these two earthquake faults. <laughs> All right, now, um, so what, the activity that's going on here, uh, fracking is the, uh, what they do with fracking is they, they pump, uh, Explain that. They pump, well, they, they, they pump fluids uh, with, with traditional hyd hydraulic frac fracking. They are pumping water in at high pressure with other chemicals that help break up the rocks. Uh, and as you break up the rocks, you make it easier for the uh, earthquake faults to slip. And so you get earthquakes. Where they're doing massive amounts of fracking in Oklahoma, they now have more earthquakes in Oklahoma than we have in all of California. Uh, they just had a magnitude 5.1 earthquake in Oklahoma. That's the third biggest earthquake in history in Oklahoma. And two of those three uh, were fracking caused earthquakes. Okay, and I just want to get this out again. You mentioned this before that the regulatory agency, Dogger, which is the Department of Oil, Gas, and Geothermal Resources. Correct. It's their primary agenda to maximize extraction of fossil fuels rather than uh, safety, right? Yes, it, it, it says in their law that they should do everything they can to maximize the extraction of oil and gas. We should not have the state government promoting the oil and gas companies. The oil and gas companies are quite capable of promoting themselves. We need to change that law to say we need to conserve and therefore we need Dogger to minimize the amount of extraction. 
Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and move to the next site. Okay, so here's another stop. What's where? Oh, so, are we? so this is a, a park that is uh, just hundreds of feet to the east of um, where the uh, entrance to the gas facility is. Uh, this is called Porter Ridge Park. However, nobody calls it that. Uh, everybody in the area calls this E.T. Park. And uh, you may even recognize that caterpillar over there from the movie. Uh, uh, bits of the, the movie were filmed here at this park. Wow, okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, so th these are the homes that were existing here at the time that this was converted into a gas storage facility when, when the gas company bought this up. Uh, and this is a place where kids play. And, and so in this case, they can't claim that the, they were here first in this right. case? Wow, okay, so the homes were here first, uh, and so they really don't have a leg to stand on, at least in this case, to say that uh, they have a right of uh, priority because of time. Right, okay. and in, in all of the years up until the last few months, uh, no notification has been given to residents that they were living near a hazardous site. We have a three-page disclosure that the realtors in the area throughout the entire San Fernando Valley, which is a population of a million people, uh, you have to sign when you're buying a house saying you have received all of these disclosures about Santa Susana Field Laboratory, about the, the Sunshine Canyon Landfill, airport noise, railroads, all kinds of hazards that are around the San Fernando Valley. They have never until now mentioned that this uh, gas facility was uh, located over oh, okay. here in those Okay, well, wait a second. You're saying on the disclosure? They didn't mention this. They mentioned everything else. They never mentioned this. Now they are. In just oh the last few months, they've added. So it all into of these the homeowners had no idea that they were living next to this this huge the, gas the, the largest storage facility? gas storage facility west of the Mississippi. That's a crime in itself. Right. It's a crime in itself that uh, that they mm -hmm. were hiding this. You know, this is the I found the mentality of these energy companies. They like to act like, oh, we're on your side, and uh, oh, we're completely open. And then when the time comes, uh, you look into it and you find out they're they're hiding so much and they're acting like they're the uh, FBI or CIA. Uh, so let's let's uh, okay, cut it off over here. Here yeah. on the side of the road, we're going to walk down this trail. You can see a little bit more of this area. Getting a nice tour here from Richard Matthews, who really knows this We're area. over at uh, Palisades Trail that uh, cuts across the hill, uh, just below the uh, gas storage facility. And as I look up the hill, uh, on the top of the hill there are a bunch of antennas, and just below that, between the trees, I see a structure that I don't recall being there before, and I am guessing that that is the drilling rig for the relief well that they used to uh, clog uh, the gas leak. Zooming in a little bit too far here. And also the wind is very high yes. here, so I have a hard time. Okay, there, there's about the best I can hold it without a tripod. Uh, interesting. And you might do a 360 degree view here of the San Fernando Valley down below Definitely. the gas leak. The valley is home to well over a million people. Uh, it is the northern third of the population of LA City. Porter Ranch is a community within LA City. Okay, um, kind of, I'm looking out over this way. What are we looking at in that direction? Over in this direction is Silmar. Uh, there are some uh, uh, okay. reservoirs on the other side of that hill over there uh, that uh, we bring in the water that Mulholland brought us. Uh, you remember the movie Chinatown and, and all of that? Uh, okay. So we, we have our reservoirs over here behind this hill. All right, now I'm As scanning you, over this way. I'm, I'm looking in this direction. Anything yeah, that's heading towards there? Burbank. Burbank right. and Glendale. Okay. And in the low spot in the mountains over there, you can see some tall buildings through the fog. Uh, that's downtown oh. LA. All right. Let me just see if I can get closer to that. Um, is the, that. Uh, the tall buildings in front of the. Oh, I see where they are. They're in the fog. There. Yeah, the, the tall buildings in front of the mountain are yeah. probably uh, Universal City yeah. around uh, Universal Studios. And then uh, the tall ones behind the mountains that are really lo almost lost in the fog today. Uh, that's downtown LA. It's a bright. Looking into the sun here is kind of hard for the camera. Yeah. Um, but we're scanning around. 
And now we're looking down a street here that's right next to it. Is that a major street? That I believe is Reseda Boulevard, uh, one of the major okay. streets through uh, the West San Fernando Valley. And Reseda Boulevard takes you right up to uh, the entrance to the storage facility. And you come through Tarzana. Uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs lived there, and so it's named for Tarzan, and uh, come oh, around really? to uh, Warner Center, Woodland okay, Hills, the tall buildings. Sit. That's good. Keep talking. So the tall buildings over this way are, are Warner Center, uh, Woodland Hills area. Okay. And as you continue looking back over these uh, very rocky sandstone mountains oh, in yeah. the distance over here, uh, we could go and take a closer look at those. That's where many uh, of the old westerns were filmed. Um, Lone Ranger and things like that were filmed uh, in with those rocks. Okay. And then as we look around here, I'm going to have to zoom out because I'm a little bit too close. Here are some houses. And then up here are very close proximity to where we are is are the peaks where all of this underground is this huge massive facility now I don't know how big the so the, the storage facility up here uh, what once the gas comes up to normal atmospheric pressure it's 87 billion cubic feet of natural gas that they are capable of storing in that field now an interesting thing is okay, that let's the, put that in context though uh, people won't understand that number. 87 billion. Uh, how much do you recall how much we might use or put that, that in context? That, that's enough that if, if all of the pipelines into California broke down and we couldn't bring anything in, we had to rely entirely on this storage, this storage would last a month or two. Okay. It's enough to feed all of Southern California for a few months. All right, so, uh, so. And when it's only being used to cover peak coverage, it, it can go on for years. And with as fast as this leak has been happening, at a ton of gas per minute, it still did not exhaust the amount uh, in five months, did not exhaust the amount of gas that is stored down there. That's unbelievable. Now, the uh, California Public Utilities Commission recently ordered that they keep um, at least 15 billion cubic feet of natural gas in there that we were drawing it down trying to reduce the pressure and that slowed down the rate of leakage uh, but the, they ordered not to reduce it below 15 billion cubic feet so we would keep that in reserve so if we did have peak usage from a really cold night or something like that that we would be able to draw on that uh, additional 15 billion cubic feet. But that's really important because that really tells us they don't need 87 billion cubic feet to provide reliability <laughs> yeah. for the system. Right. We haven't been able to independently confirm that 15 billion cubic feet number, to, but it's probably at least in the right area. And that really is much more what is really needed to maintain reliability. Is and so a, we yeah. really should have an order that permanently says, Let's keep a maximum of 15 billion cubic feet in this facility, and with that maximum, we'll be able to have reliability, but we'll keep the pressure low, and we'll be much less likely to have a future leak. Is there any, do you think, a need to have something in there just to provide a, um, some sort of a back pressure for, um, you know, to resist earthquakes and stuff? Um, well, well, actually, in, in addition to that 87 billion, there's apparently another, I think it's 82 billion cubic feet that was put in just to create pressure, just to uh, take the place of what the oil had originally been. Um, and that's non-recoverable. It, 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 the 87 billion cubic feet is what is recoverable that they can pull out, but uh, they still have plenty of gas in there, even when they go down to zero, maintaining the original pressure that the oil had had before they took the oil out. Okay, uh, one more quick view around this beautiful, this is a great viewpoint. This is probably lover's leap out here. <laughs> you know, everybody getting a little, bringing that, I guess if you could drive out here, you'd be, this is where they'd film people looking over the, the valley. And right, right along this ridge, it's a pretty steep hill, oh, too, yeah, too steep, steep to build houses. And so they left it as a natural park uh, that people use for hiking, biking, horses uh, will go along this trail as well. Uh, when, when I first lived in this area in the 60s, we were surrounded by horse ranches and orange groves. And almost all of that is gone now, but you will still occasionally find some horses around here. I'm trying to focus in on that one. Thing. We couldn't see from the other side, could we? Yeah. That must be blocked by the hill from where we were at that park. All right. 
and I have a hard time holding it still when I'm zoomed in, but there it is. That looks like the relief well that they've drilled. Okay. Started. All right, where, where are we right now? So th this is uh, one of the closest shopping centers uh, to where the gas leak is. And when we've had 20% or more of the, the people in this area evacuated out of here, these businesses are really struggling. So these okay, are supermarkets so and restaurants and UPS store. And Okay, th this so is the trailhead to Limekiln Canyon, and following this trail, it takes you right up to the entrance to the storage facility. Uh, the storage facility is called the Aliso Canyon Storage Facility. However, the leaking well actually overlooks Limekiln Canyon. And so since the poisonous gases are all heavier than air and tend to flow downhill, they will come down this canyon. And so this is one of the prime areas where uh, the gases have been. And you can see the houses that are up on the top of the ridge overlooking this canyon. Uh, and uh, all of the cars along here, a lot of people hike through this canyon. Mm -hmm. Now is uh, somewhere they put um, monitors for, for uh, hazardous gases and the like around? Do you happen to know where those are? I, I know one of the uh, monitors that there's a website that you can watch the real-time yeah, measurements that. coming in. You know That's that right is? at the entrance to the facility. Oh, at the entrance, uh, yeah. okay. But there also are several other monitors around this area. And one concern that I have had is that they do too much of this monitoring outdoors, that they are not doing enough testing indoors, mm. that uh, these heavy gases can easily accumulate inside houses. We know we have seen times where uh, one house strongly smells the mercaptan and the house right next door doesn't smell it at all. Mm. So they can accumulate indoors and we don't know if some baby's room is filling up with benzene, uh, which is a carcinogen, and that 80 years from now those cancers are going to be showing up. You know, uh, which we were saying now that's too hazardous. What I'm worried about here is that it seems to me that this stuff could really be leaking out anywhere through the ground. Absolutely. Uh, th this leak is, is not a blowout of the well head. It's not something that they could just fix the well head and, and clog it up because what's happening is a thousand feet down it's blowing out through the side of the well and percolating up through rock and mm -hmm. as it disturbs the rock radon is formed in the rock and, and that's what pulls the radon up and out is uh, yeah, all so of that it seems like they're gonna need monitoring pushing through the rock monitoring and everywhere then, it'll follow the easiest path which so far has seemed to be following up along the side of the well uh, so mm -hmm. it, it's coming up through the rock near the well but it could very easily find some other path and come up through homes or schools or businesses that are a mile away because it is a thousand feet down where this is happening. Oh my god. All right, thanks.